the focus of today's session will be how to create or how to mix muted landscape colors for a realistic effect. And for this, I will be using or creating a master study of Carlos De Gea's his work. And he was a Spanish painter who was born in Belgium, later on moved to Spain where he studied and worked most of his life. And this was in, uh, throughout the 1800s. So I will start my demonstration now, starting with the sketch and moving on to mixing the colors of this landscape. I hope you will enjoy it. The surface I'm working on is a toned linen canvas. It's actually a linen piece from a canvas pad that you can purchase on, at online retailers. And the toning is just a very simple, neutral tone mixing together. I mixed together some leftover paint with some solvent and just rubbed it onto the canvas and let it dry. This is my usual toning, how I do it. And the colors are, are listed below this video. For the sketch, I generally use a sienna color, which I mix out of cadmium red and ultramarine blue. And I'm using a solvent, Gemsol, to dilute it to a watercolor consistency. I don't want it to be too thick. That's why I dilute it so much, because I will paint on top of that. Plus, I want it to dry relatively fast. So once I have the, I, on my reference photo, I already made marks to divide up the painting into sections. I didn't create an actual grid. I usually just make halfway marks. Now there is one thing to be noted that the canvas itself, this is an eight by 10 canvas is a different shape. It's more rectangular than the original painting. So what I will do with this, because this is um, so radically different from the study, the, I mean, the original that I wanna create the master study after, that I will tape it off to make sure that my canvas shape proportionately is very similar. I'm using a about one inch, maybe a little bit less than one inch um, masking tape. And what I wanna end up with is basically an elongated, more of an oblong rectangle. So I'm just guessing here if I want it to be exact, I would have to measure and, and make it proportionate, but this is just a simple study. So I'm not so concerned about that. I just want it to be somewhat in a ballpark of the original. So now that I have that, I will create half and quarter marks on this canvas similarly to my reference photo. And uh, that's about it. So now that I have these, it will be easier to create my sketch and make it relatively proportionate to the original. What I see here is that some of the lines merge into, this is my quarter mark, into this point, starting out from the corner 
and coming this way. So basically what I do throughout the sketching pro process is compare my marks to the marks on the reference photo and try to copy it as accurately as possible. As always, I'd like to emphasize this is not a museum replica, not an exact copy of the original painting. This is just a study, which means it will be similar to the reference to the original, but it will, will not be identical. The purpose of this study and this one today is learning to mix these colors or muted landscape colors. That is the focus of this painting or of this master study. Therefore, exact details are not really important. The focal point of this painting is obviously the group of trees near the center of the canvas. And it's good to note that they don't line up. It's not exactly center, it's just near the center. This makes the composition stronger. So each time I create a line, I double check my marks and compare them to my reference and the marks on the reference photo. Now I will mix these limited range muted colors and uh, it seems like that this landscape is a relatively overcast um, day or there are some clouds on the more of a hazy, hazy, uh, not so bright, not too bright and sunny. They, therefore, the, the colors are more muted. They contain less amount of yellow in general, especially the greens. And uh, they create a really nice harmony throughout the painting. I will start by mixing the color of the sky and some of the sky reflection in the water. And I have an additional color here on my palette that I don't always use. But if I do mostly in landscape, and that is a phthalo blue, I'm starting with white, titanium white, and adding some phthalo blue to it. This blue tends to have a little bit of a greenish uh, hue. And I will also mix a white and ultramarine mixture. Ultramarine has a reddish or pinkish hue and I will use both to in, in, in an attempt to recreate the sky of this painting and I will just add a little dab here to check where I am at and this is a tad too dark so I will add more white to it. Unfortunately, on the screen, I can already tell this is going to look a little bit different than what it looks here in life. Unfortunately, there is not much I can do about this. Mm. 
especially the hue of the color, how it looks, it, it appears to be a little bit different on the screen. And this is still a little bit on the dark side. So I will keep adding more white until I get to the point where I'm happy with it. And this should be, yes, this is closer to what I wanted it to be. Now the darkest value, the darkest corner of the sky is here on the right hand side. And you can see it on the trees that the light, the, the sun or the main light source through, even though it's like partially cloudy, but the light is coming filtering through from the left side and that causes the sky to be darker on the right and lighter on the left. And of course, as normally the part of the sky that's closer to the horizon will be lighter as well. And I definitely need more white because I need to premix those I mean, I don't need it, but normally I premix uh, those colors as well, which contain just a dead more yellow green in them. So I will use a little bit more of the tail or rather, I probably won't even put any ultramarine into this mixture. That will give me a more greenish, you and I will test it here I think it's all right but not not nearly light enough it will be light enough for the middle ground here and when I'm doing this and mixing these colors I'm for now I'm ignoring the clouds the clouds will be added afterwards so the way I will approach this is just paint the blue first and then add the clouds as it seems to me that's what he has did in his painting. There are different ways to approach a sky, but as I said, I, I, I assume that's what he has done in his painting. So that's what I will do with this master's study. And more white here. I might even add a teeny tiny amount of yellow. And now I will test it again. And of course, since I'm just randomly throwing colors and values all over the canvas, this is no way going to be 100% accurate. Once I mix most of my colors, I will need to double check my values and compare them and adjust them as I go because it is uh, really difficult to judge values without really checking what's surrounding them and comparing them. So this is just a starting point to get into the ballpark of the values and into the ballpark of the colors. And the darkest dark in this painting is pretty clearly the shadows on these trees. And then of course the next darks are the reflections on the water. Very similar to the, since the, these are the shadows that are reflected in the water, but it's going to be a tad lighter. Darks reflected in water a little bit lighter and lights reflected a little bit darker. So for that, the color itself, the hue is uh, a warmer, more of an olive-like color greenish. I will start with two colors for this. One will be 
ivory black. The other one will be cadmium yellow light. And I think I'm going to need a little more. The reason I chose ivory black instead of blue is that ivory black will give me a little bit warmer green. And since this whole landscape is slightly overcast, doesn't have a very warm feel to it in the light, it means my shadow is going to be slightly on the warmer side than the lights. And I will just put a little dab here. Of course, against everything now that's surrounding this dark, this appears to be really, really dark, almost black. Actually, in the screen, it looks black. But I likely will make some adjustments to this as well as everything else once I start the blocking in process. And as I mentioned it, the reflections here will be slightly lighter, but I won't bother with them because it will be just a small adjustment to my darks. Now that I have my darkest darks, the next step is the shadows as they get go into the distance on these trees. So they get a little bit lighter and lighter and cooler in temperature. So for that, I will start again with those two yellow and black. And I'm adding the black to the yellow, not the other way around. It's generally a good idea to add the dark colors to the light on, not, the, not vice versa. It's easier to control the mixture and faster. And at this point, since, as I mentioned it, it's cooling and getting a little bit lighter, I will use a little bit of white and a little bit of ultramarine blue here. And I will just add a speck here next to this just to check it. If there is a detectable difference, there is. Again, on the screen, more than likely, this will appear to be almost the same as the original one. However, I can see it's not. It's slightly lighter, and that is what I wanted for this section. And when I get to this one, it's even lighter. So I will repeat the step that I've just done. Add a little white here, a little bit of ultramarine. Mix the two together. I probably went just slightly too far. I don't want it to be this light. I just want it to be slightly lighter. And I'm happy with the result. Now, as far as there is a tree here in the middle that's really um, more of a blue-green than a green. And there are some distant hills that are also more on the blue side. When I say blue, I mean Payne's gray. Payne's gray is a mixture of blue and gray, or we can create Payne's gray by mixing the three primaries and adding a little bit of white. I will use a black and white gray just to simplify this process for the sake of the demonstration. I will take some white, some ultramarine blue, and ivory black to get my paints gray. It's a very widely used color mixture in landscape painting, especially for distant mountains or hills and for shadows. And what I'm doing now is darkening the mixture. I went to light. Now I will. So I, I'm already comparing it here on the palette. 
I will also put a little bit here against my dark just to get a rough idea. And for now, I think I'm happy with this mixture. Same way as with all of the others, I will adjust it once I place everything around it. And then I, I'm going to have a better idea if I need to make it lighter, darker, cooler or warmer. The next large section of this painting is the sand. And there is a pretty big difference between the left side and the right side of the bank of this little creek. The left is obviously a lot lighter. However, the hue itself is relatively similar, very muted, sandy-like. To create this, I will start with a titanium white, pretty good amount. More than likely, I will have to mix a little bit more of everything when I start to block in. This is something I always do. I don't mix enough. And I keep telling my students to mix more and I make the same mistake. And not mix enough. I'm using some of my leftover from the CAD Red and Ultramarine Blue. And I, I'm going to mix this together to see how this looks and it's way, way, way too light and contains a little bit too much red. So we'll take some yellow and I will take some blue. So the way I'm figuring out these colors is relatively simple. First, First of all, I have to decide about the value and the, the hue, and then adjust the two. To do that, whatever mixture you need to mix whenever you paint, it's basically a few simple steps of manipulating the primary colors. And the primary colors here are not here, anywhere. The prim three primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. And then uh, really the addition here is white, sometimes black. We could, I could go without black and still create similar colors. Just sometimes it's an easier step. The intermediary colors I use on my palette with the crimson and the orange. Well, crimson I couldn't really create from out of nothing, especially not out of this red. That's why it's here, it's a cooler red and this one, the orange, I could, but I use it so much, it's just easier to, to have it on my palette as is. So going back to this sand color, I will add a little bit of blue. Since I added red, one of my primaries, I added yellow, orange. So this is the third primary. If something is not right or there is too much of the first two then I know I need to add the third primary and now I can see that I have too much a little bit not too much but maybe just a slight bit much yellow and blue I will go back and just add a tiny bit of red and how did I know that because my colors are turning greenish And what I will do now is put a little dab here. And again, I don't have much to compare to here, so it cannot be accurate as far as value goes. But it's enough for me to see if it's in the ballpark of what I was aiming for, and it is. Now I will mix this part of the sand and the foreground on the left as well. It is more brownish, contains more red, more orange. Similar steps, starting with titanium white. And adding 
just a little bit more red and orange into this mixture than I did in the previous one. So orange, red, so the orange obviously already includes the yellow and the red, but I increased the red in there and of course I need blue, otherwise I would just get a pinkish peachy color. And see how this looks. So what I see is very neutral now and not exactly what I need. So I will pick up some yellow and I will also take a little bit more orange. That's pretty clearly to yellow now. So I keep going back and forth until I reach the hue that I'm looking for. And then readjust my values. This needs to be a little bit darker than this, so I'm not worried that this is getting darker at this point. I will actually make it even darker than what it is by adding a little bit more blue and a little bit more red. Put a little dab down here and a little bit on this side. And I'm comparing it to the screen, um, to, to my reference photo. It's still a little bit on the pinkish side. To balance that, I need to use more yellow, more blue. And I will check it again. Put a little bit here. It's getting also a little bit dark, so I have to scale back on my values, on my darkness. But now it's really close to what I uh, intended to mix. So I'm happy with that. There are some darker areas up here, and they kind of like um, an amber color, but muted. So I, I will need to use similar, um, a similar approach. It will have less white in it. It's going to be obviously darker than anything else. I will start with the ultramarine blue in this case, because it's a pretty dark shadow mixture. And I will again use my primaries, yellow and red, to achieve the color I'm looking for. And these are now the majority of colors. There are some intermediaries, some greens um, also on the light side that I still need to mix. But after I have that, I pretty much created most of, mixed most of the colors, the main colors of this painting. And you can see how muted every single one of these colors are and you can see that the really simply what I've used were mostly my primaries with the addition of some white and uh, in some instances, the addition of ivory black. As far as the greens on the lighter side of the trees go, they are slightly cooler than the shadows and I will need more white to start with this, I'm using lots of white here because it helps me to mute the colors. And generally green contains blue and yellow. So I will add some yellow here. Although these, since these are very muted greens, the amount of yellow they, these greens contain is relatively minimal. And then some blue and mix it together to see. So this is way, way, way too much yellow. There is no such green in this painting. A lot more muted. So a simple way to mute green is to use the complementary color of green, which is red. 
But before I do that, I also need to make this darker. So I need more ultramarine blue in my mixture. That's more what I'm looking for as far as the value goes. And also it helps to tame the yellow in the mixture. I just need some small amount of red to mute it further, to gray it a little bit and make it more subtle. I'm starting to block in my darks first. Also, I could start with the sky. It, it really uh, doesn't make a difference at this point. So I'm picking up these darkest darks. And loosely block it in. I'm using a bristle brush. This is a filbert. And the size is number four, Robert Simmons. It's one of the most often used brushes I have, this brand. And I'm going down here, also very dark. I'm adding a little bit of red here. Again, these are warm shadows, relatively or warmer than my lights.
stage of this painting is blocking in the sky and then painting the clouds. So I will be using this premix color that I had here. And now I have something to compare it to as far as value and color goes. And I'm pretty happy with it. This is the last and final stage of this painting where I will complete the sky by painting the clouds. And I'm using an off-white. I added a little bit of cadmium yellow and cadmium orange, very, very small amount just to slightly warm up the color mixture. But it's basically almost invisible. And these clouds are just uh, really loosely painted, fluffy, little texture on the canvas. If you enjoyed this demonstration, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I release new master studies regularly. And if you have any questions, you are welcome to ask questions in the section below.